Hi everyone again, here is Mr. Safe, your science teacher for this course and today we're going to be talking about a really interesting topic in science which is energy and devices. Let's get started. We have studied in the previous lesson how energy is a changing from one form to another form and also we have studied some of the devices that convert the energy from one form to another. Today consider this the second part. Today we are going to study some of the electric devices that may be represented in front of you on the screen and other secrets. Be waiting at the end, I have a gift for you. Maybe from the forms of energies that we have studied in the previous lesson, kinetic energy, electric energy, light energy, and other forms. But we didn't study that the water is a form of energy. Water is not a form of energy, but it could be a source of energy. But how can we use the water to generate electricity? Think about this question. If you didn't find the answer yet, let me help you. Take a look on the screen. You can find the GIF represents the flow of water on a dam. We can use the flow of water, the movement of water in front of you to generate electricity, which is a form of energy. So water is not a form of energy, but it's a source. We can use it to generate a form of energy, which is electricity. But what is the link? If your answer was the dynamo, that means you are brilliant. The dynamo is a tool used to convert the movement into electricity. So the dynamo converts the kinetic energy into electric energy. So we can use the dynamo under the dams to use the flow of water as a source makes the dynamo wheels move around or rotate around itself. When the dynamo rotates around itself, it converts this movement into electricity. So how can we deliver the electricity from the dynamo into other places simply by electric wires? <laughs> we can connect the dynamo by electric wires to electric stations and these electric stations deliver the electricity from this place to other places. So simply, this is how to generate electricity, which is really important to make the electric devices work. So here, the electric energy is the input energy in all electric devices. Keep this in mind, any electric device uses electric energy to work. So here, we can consider the electric energy is an input one, input four of energy. It goes inside the electric device, whatever is it, and make it work. So let's take example. Here the washing machine. It's an electric machine. It takes what? What makes the washing machine works? Actually, electricity. So the washing machine uses electric energy to work. So the output energy is different, but the input one is electricity. Let's take another example, which is the TV. The TV needs electric energy to work. The hair dryer. The hair dryer takes electric energy to work. We can find the common energy between all of them, the input one. Why? Simply because they are electric devices. So the electric energy is an input energy inside the electric devices. This is the form of energy that goes in, that makes them work. They use it to work. So it's input energy. Keep this word in mind. But the output energy is different. The output energy, the energy comes out from the electric devices or maybe other devices. Let's take example here, the washing machine. We said it uses electricity. So the input one is electricity. But the output represented by the movement here. Do you remember what does it mean movement? Kinetic energy, you are brilliant. Let's take another example, which is the TV. The TV is another electric device, so it uses the electric energy, the same input one, but the output energy from the TV is different. Can you guess? Excellent, it's light or maybe sound energy. We call these forms of energy in this situation, in the current situation, when we are talking about the TV, output energy. Energy comes out from the TV. So the input energy is the same of the previous device, electric. But the output one, sound and light. So here we have a big difference between the input energy and the output energy. We call the input one the energy that the device needed to work to produce another form of energy, which is the output one, where the energy comes out from the electric device. Input goes in, output 
comes out. Let's take another example, which is the hair dryer. The hair dryer, another electric device, uses the same input energy, which is electric energy. But it produces different form of energy for you, which is heat. This is going to help you to change your haircut style. So we can find this all of the electric devices use the same input one, which is electric energy. Maybe they are different in the output one. The TV produces light. The hair dryer produces heat. So if we want to talk about a different tool, which is the battery, we can find the input energy is different, which is chemical energy. You are right. And the produced energy from the battery is electric energy. But we have two types of batteries. Rechargeable batteries, which can be recharged when the energy inside run out, and not rechargeable batteries, which can be replaced by another one when the energy inside is finished. So let's talk about the second part of the lesson, which is energy chain. What does it mean a chain? Simply means sequence, means steps, means many parts, but they are connected together. So let's talk about the first step or the first port of our energy chain. It's the sun. The sun represents the first step in any energy chain in our world because it's the main source of the light and the heat energy to us. The sun is not just important to produce light energy and heat energy to us, but it's also important for the plant. Why? Because the plant takes the light energy of the sun and convert this light energy into food, food chemical energy. So simply the plant takes light energy converted into chemical energy. Chemical energy means food and food means chemical energy, especially when we are talking about the plant. So here the plant converts the light energy of the sun into the food which represents a form of energy which is chemical. So what does the plant do with the light? The plant simply takes the light. Here the input energy is light energy and the produced energy is chemical stored inside the food of the plant. This is really important because it makes the plant able to grow up and produces other plants, fruits, vegetables. We can use some of them as a source of food. Without the sun, what's gonna happen? So let me ask you another question. What happens at or what happens when? If we lost the sun, if there is no sun, what's gonna happen to the plant? Simply the plant will die. This process known as photosynthesis. Photosynthesis, it's the process that the plant make when it takes the light energy and convert it into food. This food is stored inside the plant parts, makes the plant grow up and produces other parts for us, which are vegetables and maybe fruits. Here is the first energy chain. It starts with the sun, as we talked in the previous part. The sun produces for you light energy. Is this the end? No, <laughs> we still have other steps. The light energy is converted by the plant into chemical energy, which is stored inside the food. I mean the fruits, the vegetables, the parts of the plant. So when the plant makes photosynthesis using the light to produce chemical energy stored in the food, the plant grows up. So what's the next step? The next step here is represented by human. When the human feeds on plant, I mean eats the plant parts, the human in this time convert the chemical energy which is stored inside the food into kinetic energy. The kinetic energy is used by the human to perform different activities in life. So what was the first step here? Amazing, the sun. The sun produces what for you? Amazing, light. Is this the end? No, that was just the first step. Sun produces light energy. The light energy is converted by the plant into chemical energy. So the chemical energy is stored in the food. The human eats the food to convert the chemical energy into kinetic energy, which is the final step in the first energy chain, which is energy chain in eating food. So let's talk about the second energy chain, which is energy chain in heating water. How can we start this? Amazing, the first step always is the sun. The sun is the main source of energy, as we said before. It produces for you 
amazing light energy the light energy is converted by the plant into chemical energy as we said before especially in the previous activity so the chemical energy stored inside the plant can be stored inside until the plant grow up sometimes we cut the plant okay this is not general sometimes we cut the plant especially the trees or the long parts of the trees i mean the stem and burn them this is the same idea of making coal so when we burn something it produces heat energy we can use this heat energy in cooking so how can we start this energy chain by the sun the sun produces what light energy what does the light energy represents for the plant amazing <laughs> it's the source of the food or the source of energy the plant needed to convert it into food when the plant is able to take the light and convert it into food the plant grows up so when the plant grows up it represented here by a long tree we can cut this tree and burn some of the parts here to produce for you heat energy this heat energy we use it in cooking so what was the first step again the sun excellent the sun produces for you light energy who takes this light energy amazing the plant the plant takes the light energy and convert it into chemical energy stored in the food then the plant grows up containing the chemical energy that we said then sometimes we cut the parts of the trees and burn them directly. When we burn something, the heat energy is produced. When we produce heat energy, we can use it simply in cooking. The third energy chain in our lesson, energy chain in the hair dryer. The first step is always in the sun. Here is the first step. The sun produces for you. Yes, excellent. It produces light energy. Who can take this light energy? amazing the plant the plant convert the light energy into chemical energy amazing so when the plant takes the light energy of the plant and convert this light energy into chemical energy the plant grows up we can understand that the energy can change from one form to another so it can be changed from heat energy into electric energy but how that happen let me explain here we go in the electric power stations, we can use larger amount of coal to produce larger amount of heat. Larger amount of heat can be used to evaporate larger amount of water. When we evaporate the water, the water changes from liquid into gas. So if we have large amount of gas, we can put a wheel of a dynamo over this amount of water vapor. The water vapor moves up, so the dynamo rotates around itself to generate electricity. This is how the electric power stations convert the heat energy of the coal into electric energy. But this is not just a few amount of electric energy. This is large amount of electric energy. So then we can deliver this electric energy to your home and we can connect an electric device such as hair dryer, maybe TV, maybe radio, maybe other things to electricity. When they are connected to electricity, they can convert the electric energy into another form. So let's be specific. In the hair dryer, the input energy is electric energy, and the produced one here is heat energy. Excellent. So let's do it again together. The beginning here was at the sun. The sun produces light energy. Who gets the light? The plant, it converts the light into chemical energy. So then when we cut the plant, we can convert the chemical energy into heat. Where exactly we can do this with a large amount of coal? Amazing, in the electric power stations. So the electric power stations, it changed the energy that found in the coal into electricity. So it changes the large amount of heat that produced here into large amount of electric energy. We can simply deliver this amount of energy, which is electric energy to your home. And inside the home, we can plug a hair dryer into electricity. So the hair dryer takes the electric energy and produces for you heat energy. And this is how can you change your haircut style.
the last energy chain which is energy chain in your smartphone would you like to know how does your smartphone work since the beginning <laughs> let's get started here is the first step it's the sun and the sun produces for you light energy the light energy is converted by the plant into chemical energy as we said in the previous energy chains always the plant takes light energy converted into chemical energy it's it's food okay so that's the food of the plant then the plant grows up and we can cut it to produce large amount of heat by these parts of the plant when we cut them or turn them into coal so here the chemical energy is it changing into electric energy as we said previously in the electric power stations so then we can deliver these amount of electric energy to your home now we have electric energy in the home how does your smartphone work starting by this point the electric energy can be changed into chemical energy inside the battery of the smartphone this is happening when you plug your smartphone to the charger the charger takes electric energy and convert it into chemical inside the battery so here that's the most important step the most important part in the lesson is this step so this is how the battery work the battery takes electric energy and is stored in a form of chemical energy so how does the smartphone work actually in the last part it converts the chemical energy from the battery to electric energy the electric energy here makes the smartphone work but what's gonna happen when the battery runs out so what is happening when the amount of chemical energy inside the battery is finished you need to recharge the battery so here you are taking electric energy again and store it or convert it into chemical energy again you can find here this step it's the same step here because actually this is how the battery deals with the electric energy coming from the charger so you can find this step is repeated because actually when the battery needs to work it takes always electric energy and convert it into chemical energy this is to where the chemical energy is used by the smartphone the smartphone takes some of the stored energy here in the battery convert them into electric energy so it can work so when the smartphone needs to work actually it takes some of the stored energy in the battery and convert them into light and sound simply this is how the smartphone is working let's repeat the same step again we're gonna start by the sun the sun produces light the light is converted into chemical energy by the plant then we can cut some of the plant parts to burn them so we change chemical energy which is the part of the plant into large amount of electricity in the electric power stations we can deliver this amount of electricity to your home and in your home you can connect the smartphone with the charger inside the smartphone we can find battery the battery takes the electric energy and is stored in a form of chemical energy then the smartphone change this chemical energy into sound and light but what is happening when the amount of energy in the battery is finished you need to recharge it the electric energy is taken by the charger inside the battery to be converted into stored amount of chemical energy again then the smartphone convert some of the chemical energy stored in the battery into the forms of energy that you need actually which is light and sound that was the last energy chain in our lesson don't forget to make like subscribe if you didn't make yet don't forget to ask me any question in the comments below and don't forget i can create your favorite game just suggest the name of the game that you want in the comments below and see you goodbye <laughs> because you were very smart in the previous lesson i created a gift for you you can find the link of this gift below down in the description of the video once you click on the link it opens for you airplane mode you can find here the game you can find your own airplane you can read the question below down in the screen and the answers are represented on the clouds pick up the cloud that represents the right answer stay away from the wrong clouds or the wrong answers and let's try one together <laughs>
here is the question. The produced energy from the cell phone is? So we are looking for sound only, no. Light only, no. Light and sound. This is the right answer. Give yourself a big hand and see you again. <laughs> Goodbye.